Hey church, happy Tuesday here. It's Pastor Carrie here at my house for our Keeping Connected video today. And I remind you, we're reading the Gospel of Mark together. Yesterday, Pastor Drew started this with you in the Keeping Connected videos. We have sent out the reading plan to you, and if you didn't grab that already, it's not too late. It came out in the Monday Connect yesterday. It's on our website, mumconline.com slash connect. And you can get that. It's a very easy reading plan. You're talking about half a chapter a day, Monday through Friday. So it's definitely attainable goal for all of us. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Mark and the writer of this gospel. Um, Mark wrote this gospel about 70 years, give or take some, after Jesus lived, died, and was resurrected. These stories about Jesus had been passed down orally from generation to generation and person to person. And Mark really coined this literary style where he combined both oral stories and he put them into a written tradition. And now we have those obviously today for us. This gospel is the shortest gospel. So it is only 16 chapters and he moves very quickly from story to story, narrative to narrative with the whole goal of trying to show the readers that Jesus is the Messiah that they have been waiting for. And so it is a very easy gospel to read, especially for those of us like myself who have a little bit of a short attention span. So I recommend it to you. Now in our section for today, which is the second half of the first chapter, there are four big movements that Mark uses to show this that Jesus is the Messiah. And the first, and they take place in Capernaum and in Galilee and in that surrounding area. And in the first one, a man comes to them with an unclean spirit, or what we can call a demon in him. And Jesus casts this demon out of the man. And Mark shows us that Jesus is even so powerful that the demons recognize Jesus and they call him by name. They say, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? How, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So the demons even know who Jesus is. And this is a really powerful thing for us to understand. Immediately after this story, we move into the story where Jesus goes into Simeon's mother-in-law's house and he heals his, her, his mother-in-law. And after that, the gospel records that droves of people come to Jesus to be healed. And this is a very powerful beginning to Jesus' healing ministry. Right after that, we take a quick tour of Galilee, and Jesus says that he went from synagogue to synagogue to town to town in Galilee, which is a big region, teaching and preaching the stories of God and how to have faith. And then the last story in this first chapter is about the cleansing of a leper. So in this, Mark shows how much emotion Jesus has. He's moved to pity to heal this leper. And he does. And then he says, don't tell anybody. But of course, the leper didn't obey. And he went and told everybody. And that you'll hear more about later as we get to hear Mark. There's a lot of secrecy that Jesus says when in Mark's gospel, and I'm sure we'll talk more about that in time to come, but that's something for you to ponder. These broad movements that were recorded by Mark are showing Jesus as an emerging leader, as the Messiah of the people. And the, reading, the people reading this or hearing this back in Bible times, as I like to call it, would be led on a journey of discovery. And you and I are being led on the same journey. The more that we read these stories, these gospel stories about Jesus, the more we seek to understand who he is and the more we learn together. So I am going to be praying for you as you read the scripture each day and as you, as you seek God, understanding about God's word. And we will continue this journey together. I miss you. And I can't wait for us to get back together to discuss this scripture together. But until then, I do encourage you as you read each day, discuss this with the family members in your house or pick up the phone and call a friend. There is nothing more powerful than discussing scripture together. All right, that's all for me for now. I hope to see you again soon. Um, but until then, stay safe and keep healthy.
Bye, guys.